Christina McKelvey, followed by Donald Cameron. Uh, thank you very much, P President Officer. We've heard today the chaotic muddle that is Brexit is set to take away a lot more than jobs and trade. Without the removal of the clause formerly known as a living, we enabled Theresa May's government to begin dismantling the very framework upon which this Scottish Parliament was reconvened. What is not reserved is therefore devolved. That's the words in that agreement. And like a cut that begins with a trickle then develops into an arterial gush, the damage that is Brexit is leaking and spreading. Scotland alone has 134,000 people in jobs supported by EU trade. Skilled EU nationals leaving these shores every day. I know many of them, including those in health and social care sectors, people that we need greatly in these areas. And a hard Brexit could lead to a loss of 8.5% of GDP in Scotland by 2030, equivalent to £2,300 per individual. That is a remarkable impoverishment with unthinkable consequences for individuals, families and our society as a whole. Now, on top of this insult comes the potential for real constitutional attack. We are facing a blatant and highly alarming attempt to begin withdrawing the very powers under which the Scottish Parliament was reconvened. David Mundell has repeatedly refused to say that the Scottish Government would not overrule a decision of the Scottish Parliament to withhold its consent on the EU withdrawal bill. Adam Tomkins. Very grateful to Christina McKelvey for giving way. Will she please identify even a single power that this Parliament currently has which is under threat and being taken away by this bill? Christina McKelvey. All of them, because quite frankly, President Officer, I don't trust these people with any of them. <laughs> under the current powers, the current UK Government proposal, we could see the powers of the Scottish Parliament change without the consent of this Parliament for the first time ever. And it's a very interesting definition of consent that we have in these proposals, as Patrick Harvey has pointed out. Not a definition that I understand. Is this Mrs May's strategy for dismantling the devolved powers that we have worked so hard to retrieve, I wonder? The Scottish Government is not opposed to UK-wide frameworks when these are in Scotland's best interest. We know that. What we won't tolerate is being ignored, punished, and kicked to the side by those who want imperial control. We need trust and respect, qualities in very short supply in the UK government, in many cases in this chamber, presiding officer, to agree proposals without them being imposed upon us. And that's the important point here, imposed upon us, not for us, but against us. This is arguably the most serious attack on Scottish democracy since this parliament re was reconvened nearly 20 years ago, a proud day for many of us. We all worked long and hard to make devolution work and it has largely been successful. We have made Scotland a better place, behaved with wisdom, justice, integrity, well some of us, compassion and mostly dignity. And in doing so, we have won national and international respect as a parliament. We should never do that down. This is something all of us, all of us in this chamber can be justifiable take justifiable pride in. Presiding Officer of the Scotland Act was created, which created this place, opened with the now famous words, there shall be a Scottish Parliament. Words immortalised on the mace which sits in front of us today. Those words were not just an aspiration, they were a promise, a promise to our people, a statement that old wrongs would be righted. A declaration of intent, yes, that our new democracy would be modern, civilised, forward thinking and we would be the keeper of our own house. The words that brought this parliament into being most assuredly did not say there shall be a Scottish parliament subject to the winds of convenience of politicians in London who can strip away its powers for their own ends whenever it suits them without consent. That's not what those words say. We are not going to surrender what we have achieved. We are not going to hold the door open while Mrs May and her acolytes trample all over this place and threaten to close us down if we don't behave ourselves and do what we are told. Sounds a bit dystopian, doesn't it? Well, I never thought I would become, it would become normal to tell someone with a terminal brain tumour that they were fit for work. And I didn't think either that a family using its small third bedroom to keep dialysis equipment for its young son would be ever told to pay a bedroom tax. Dystopian. I do not trust these people with my country. I didn't think either that that family would have to face those tragedies and trials the way we are having to face them today. Presiding officer, 
EU laws provide us with protections in employment rights, equality rights, the right to belong to any religion or none, to have a safe home and food and livestock fan, uh, standards that cover the quality and provenance of the meat and other food that we eat. The UK government seems to be rubbing its hands with glee while pondering which EU laws to, with, to delete or withdraw. The lack of any commitment in this bill to the Charter of Fundamental Rights tells us everything we need to know. They ask us to trust them. Can we, when we, see, can we do that when we see they do not actually trust us? The door could soon be open to fracking, GM crops and eating chlorinated chicken, nothing that I want to see. I can never accept this attack on our freedom, presiding officer, our democracy, or our right to do what's best for the best interests of our nation, the nation of Scotland. And I am confident that this parliament feels the same. It can be, and we will, defend anybody who undermines the powers of this Scottish parliament. <laughs> presiding officer, call it defiance, if you will. But in the philosopher and the wolf, Mark Rowlands reminds us, in the end, it is our defiance that redeems us. So with belief and resolution, let us redeem ourselves today, support the motion and tell the UK government to get back to the table and talk to us in a manner that, that demands that respect. Donald